Hi. Hello, everyone. Um, all righty. Hi. Um, we'll start. It's 316. I'm Monica. Um, I'm a full-time actor and I make TikTok videos. I When Aaron um, showed me the name, it was like TikTok educator. I was like, wow, I, I sound so Gen Z. Um, but it's cool because like I am Gen Z, I think. I think. Or like cusp of millennial. But um, yes, I make a lot of TikTok videos about like Filipino culture and representation and colorism, everything from Disney to color some. Uh, I make those videos and I've been doing them since the beginning of quarantine. I also like to write stories. Hi, Nicole, Bernardo. Hello, welcome. Hi, Shay V. Welcome to the broadcast. Hello. Okay, it's working. People are popping in. I don't know how to get into you to here. So if anybody can like comment because my dad doesn't know how to get into the podcast but yes I will be talking about um three of my favorite videos that I've made um hello um through TikTok I only have 30 minutes so I'm going to see if I can compress I'm here now okay hello brother or is that my dad I don't know but yes um I'm going to be talking about these three videos um let's see if I can figure this out Erin have faith in me <laughs> I will start with the first one. You got this. I got this, guys. I'm only a little bit nervous. Only a lot. Um, but first, I want to give a shout out to Daystar Dream Masks and Ugat shirts because they gave these to me and they're small Filipino owned businesses. So, yes. Hello, Jessica. <laughs> okay, yes. All right. Let me see. Let's figure this out. Oh, we're going to talk about, all right, Chrome tab. We're going to do the first video. Share audio. All right, we're sharing it, guys. All right, I hope you guys are seeing this. Oh God! All right. Oh my Lord! This is the first video I made. All right. Okay, that song is in my head now for the rest of the day. Um, so that was the first ever video that I've ever made that went viral i guess that's yes um it's my most viewed video until now and my most liked video um on TikTok and instagram um and i made it in like under an hour with my uh parents my mom and my dad are like they're the reason why it went viral which is very true if i was by myself it looked really weird so yeah we did the colors of the philippine flag red yellow and blue um, yes, my dad wore a barong and my mom wore like a modern barotsaya and I wore a terno. Um, but yes, I made that. I'm like, dang, people actually want to know about culture of my people, of the Filipino community. And that's why I absolutely love TikTok. Um, my whole For You page is like Native Americans, Black Americans, Hispanic Americans, just a bunch of people that are trying to do, share their culture. And I'm like, all right, maybe I should do that for us as Filipinos and, you know, I don't see as many. I feel like a lot of Filipino creators tend to go for like the comedic route where we do like our Filipino accents or like stereotypes and stuff where a lot of our videos that I see are like that. So I was like, let's do a little bit different and talk about our issues because I feel like we have quite a lot of <laughs> things we should work on as a community and um, unlearning a lot of our colonial mentalities and self-deprecating jokes and, and whatnot. So yes, Dean, thank you. Um, but yes, that video uh, was so awesome because seeing all like a lot of like young Filipinos like, oh my gosh, I've never seen like a Filipiniana like that. Um, it was made by a local designer. No, Jessica, it's your dad part two. <laughs> um, so, so yes. Um, yeah, that's, it's, yeah, that's my dad. I think that's my dad, Jessica. <laughs> Um, but yes, that my dad is watching the, the live stream. He figured it out, guys. He figured it out. Um, but yes, that was the first viral video that I made, and I'm very proud of it. Um, but yes, now we're going to go to our second video. Let's see if I can figure this out. Um, all right. This one. Okay, so this one, I go in a little more serious topics. Uh, thank you, Erin. I appreciate you for sharing the link. Yes, you can plug my TikTok. <laughs> It's all good. Um, all right. Chrome tab. Here we go. Hello, Kuya. My Kuya is in the broadcast. So I actually, I tried to organize this live in a way where I can like plug my family and also talk about stuff that are important to me. So 
yes, we'll talk about the behind the scenes of my TikToks. So here we go. Um, here we are. So this one is about colorism. I'm such a boomer. Guia, dad beat you to the broadcast. That is a little, wow, it's embarrassing. Okay, here we go. Uh, oh, did I? Oh, shoot. Ports you had in society based off of the shade of your skin. At the top of the pyramid are the full blooded Spaniards born in Spain, followed by the Americanos and the full blooded Spaniards born in the Philippines. Then we had the Tornatras and then the Mestizo de Espanol, people mixed with Spanish and Austronesian descent. Under them are people mixed with Chinese and Austronesian descent. Then the full blooded Chinese, followed by the full blooded Austronesians. And at the very bottom, the Aita, Batak, or Maman line. The reason why I'm sharing this with you is because there's still many repercussions that that racial hierarchy still holds today. From our praised celebrities, to the unfortunate use of blackface for comedic relief, to our actors with natural Filipino features to only be used for comedic purposes, or as the other friend, the help, etc. But that's just my observation. Let's okay. talk about the racial, that video. racial hierarchy oh, that is still quite prevalent Monica. in the Philippines today. So I came across this chart. I know. Well, okay, there we go. There we are. Okay, good. Awesome. I finally figured out how to sign on. Yes. So that video, um, I love Employ, by the way. Okay, that's just um, a plug for Employ. Um, it is something that I grew up watching a lot of like the Laserias and like what like beauty queens, all, if not all of them are mixed or they have Spanish looking features. And that's something that, you know, comes with the years and years and years, uh, text me, please. Like, <laughs> the years of um, just that influence of westernized beauty to toward us as Filipinos. The farther I looked as Filipino, like the fairer I was, the more thongless my nose was, all of these things that made me look less Filipino was the things that people would praise. Or like my cousins that didn't look very Filipino, they, they were like the pretty cousin or the handsome cousin because they looked like they were mixed. Like that was a compliment. And I think we can all agree that that is a compliment for our, especially our older generation Filipinos, uh, whether that's in the Philippines or in the States. It, it's so the fixation toward westernized beauty is apparent. And so like for me, I, I found it really important to call out, um, especially like in my family. I don't, it's not something that I talk about. I'm like, why is it that we always love fair skin and like all these features that make us look less Filipino? I feel like that's it's kind of a backwards thought process. So like this video and videos like it get um, a lot of people talking in my comments and, and, and really like questioning just what we find as beautiful. And unfortunately for me, I had to hear it from other people especially here in the states that like would praise my tan in order for me to feel like valid which i'm trying to unlearn as well <laughs> like things that like my my almond eyes or my dark skin or my high cheekbones i don't need the validation of the majority for it to be valid and for it to be beautiful so that was the motivation for that video and then the last one which is um the vast majority of my videos now, I'm mostly like talking about representation of Filipinos or Asians in my TikToks, mainly because that is my career path and my passions, which are um, being able to have a stronger presence of Filipino Americans in Hollywood. You're awesome. I like your advice, motivation. I created a new Instagram to promote wellness through dance. That is awesome. Yes, Marcus, I will check that out. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, but yes, yeah, we can like collaborate. I want to get to um, talk to as many people as I possibly can that are in this industry totally get that i grew since i grew up with indo guyanese culture we adapted to the colorism that came with our indian roots since guyana is mixed with indian chinese and african people majority indian i grew up with colorism but also thinking it's bad if you look like you were half black it's so sad but i'm learning it all too yes jessica we love to see it we love to see it um hello marky welcome welcome we are just talking about colorism now and representation for Filipinos. So this last video I'm going to share with you will tie into the last thing I'm going to share with you as well. I'm going to plug in a little bit. Um, but this video is about representation and Filipino representation in Hollywood. So here we go. Uh, all right, here we are. Half Filipino. Now, now let's just refresh that so that you guys can get the whole video. Here we go. Let's, Let's talk, talk about, about Filipinos, Filipinos on TV. TV. First, we have Marina Sanchez from Lizzie Wire, and I know what you're thinking, Monica. She was Mexican. 
I know, in the show, show she was, was but in real life, life, she's Filipino. Both of Lilane's parents are from the Philippines, and she's not the only Filipino who has been interchanged with other ethnicities. In Hollywood, it's kind of a thing they've done for a very long time. Which brings me to my next culprit, Vanessa Hudgens in High School Musical, playing Gabriela Monte, who I believe in the movie was supposed to be Mexican or Spanish, and Vanessa is half Filipino. Now in 2008, we were achieving progress. Shay Mitchell was playing Emily Fields, which in the books was supposed to be a strawberry blonde with green eyes, and Sis in the show was Korean, Filipino, and Irish. It wasn't made out to be a really big deal, but to me, it was a big deal because for the first time, I was actually seeing a Filipino playing a role that was meant for a white girl. Obviously, it was because, you know, Emily Fields, her ethnicity had very little to do with the story, so it was completely fine for it to be changed. And I'm happy they did because Emily Fields was the best character in that show. Let's talk about Filipinos on TV. Am I good? Awesome, awesome, yes, all right. I, okay, thank you, Erin. I absolutely loved Shay Mitchell and I love um, everything that she's done. Um, anyways, I can count on my hands every single Filipino actor that I've watched growing up. And I knew exactly what they what they were in if they were playing Filipino. Um, and as someone who's, uh, I very much am in love with seeing people that look like me on TV and in cartoons, anything that I could relate with remotely. I'm like, oh my gosh, they're like me. Um, but Miranda Sanchez, I, I was so obsessed with her. Um, Lelaine Paras, she's full Filipino. Uh, my cousin actually were, was like family friends with her. So I felt like this kind of like kinship to her and she didn't even know who I was. I'm like this girl's Filipino, even though she's never, I don't think played a Filipino character in TV. And it goes to show that like, it's not that there aren't enough Filipino actors, but more so not enough projects that actually look for Filipino actors. As a Filipino actor, I've auditioned for more things that are looking for a Latino woman as than an Asian, Filip like a Filipino woman. As a brown Asian, um, I tend to get put out for auditions that are meant for Latino women or Hispanic women, which is unfortunate because you shouldn't interchange um, POC, but like, I gotta pay the bills. and opportunities are opportunities and I audition and I hope for the best um but anytime I do get to audition for something that's looking for a Filipino woman I feel like it's a unicorn in like in the sea which it's just so rare um especially in Florida oh my goodness um very rare um and very unlikely to get jobs and opportunities like that so um the, my solution I found is um giving opportunities to creators that are Filipino, to have more Filipino uh, writers, directors, and filmmakers, and making projects. My oldest brother, who's in here, I think, I hope, you're still in here, Cleo? My boomer cut brother, uh, not boomer. Do they have free spin? <laughs> um, he's a filmmaker, and we make projects. Like, he's the reason why I um, came into um, acting uh, was because he needed actors when he was making his short films. And that's the, what sparked my passion and love for acting was being his little guinea pig. We just recently made a short film for the road, my road um, short film contest. Is that what it's called? My road reel. Um, so yeah, I'm going to plug it. It's two minutes of your time. Anyways, uh, but yes, we made it during quarantine and um, it's doing pretty well, I would like to say. Um, but yes, making, supporting your Filipino American writers and creators is the key to having more roles meant for Filipinos. To have more Filipinos on screen, there have to be more Filipinos off screen. Yes. So yeah, here we go. I hope you guys like this one because this one is fun <laughs> my road reel all right share audio i will mute myself aaron i know what to do now all right so that you guys can Hello, and thank you for calling IT Support, where we do more than tell you to turn it on and off again. Who do I have the pleasure of speaking with? Hi, uh, my name is Maya. 
Hi, Maya. How can I help you today? I'm trying to get into my boyfriend's computer because uh, he recently passed away and all of our memories are on his computer. Oh, I'm so sorry. Normally we would need to speak with the owner, but what we can do is if you're able to answer the security question, we can give you the password. Okay, uh, I should be able to. The question is, who is your best friend? Steven? I'm sorry, that's incorrect. You only have one attempt left. Maya. Correct. The password is, are you ready? You might need to write it down. Maya, what are you, what are you doing here? You're trying to get in my computer again? Hello? I, I, I told you I'm not cheating on you. I'm so sorry, babe. I'm never doubting you ever again. Ma'am, the password is Stephen Forever 14369. So it's Stephen, the number Forever 14369. I thought it was your hand. Hey, babe, I got some ice cream. Hey, Maya, do you want some cake? Yo, let's let's go watch some uh, some football with such down, yeah. See? Bros. Did the password work? Did you get into the computer? Okay, well if you're still there, when the call disconnects, there's gonna be a satisfaction survey. If you could just leave me a five, I'd really appreciate it. Alright, thank you. I hope you have a nice day. My condolences again. is my um sister-in-law so um my sister-in-law makes film scores and my brother who was the one who was behind the camera is a filmmaker and my boyfriend my brother and i are actors so it's a family um of uh, occasion an oscar yes shay absolutely i'm obsessed with the amount of emotion I yes jessica <laughs> and jessica's the best friend so the supportive friend is actually mental. Yes, brother, it is. Um, but yes, there is. I don't know how do I get the link to vote if you guys wanted to vote, and if you wanted to vote. Um, there is. Is there still voting, Cleo? Please let me know. Yes, we vote. Thank you. That would be amazing. Feel free to drop. Yes, Cleo, please drop it in the um comments. That would be awesome. But yes, we um plan. Um, I plan on making more um, short films with my brother and my sister-in-law and my family. I feel like, honestly, like the only way to see more roles is to create them for ourselves. Follow her on social, yes. Yeah, that's my social media if you guys wanna check it out. Um, I make a bunch of videos on TikTok. That's like the most consistent social media I do. And then Instagram is all um, just, personal stuff and occasionally I do IGTV I have like a five-part series of just like fa random facts about Filipinos and Filipino American culture um and I should make more videos on that but haven't had the time but I am going to eventually make more videos and short films uh hopefully we can make like a short film brother like about Filipino culture just like the dynamics um but yes what else did I want to talk about oh yes vote please vote my friends <laughs> if you haven't yet vote i couldn't sign out of my my space that's okay i hope i'm still on your top eight um on my space but yes i um if you guys ever want to collaborate with me if there are any like creators out there that want to make content um i absolutely love writing content and um acting and anything that has to do with the arts, like a traditional Filipina. Um, I'm also going to be having a panel later at five o'clock um, with a group of amazing, amazing Filipi uh, people. Um, we have Matt Ortil, who is the founder of BuzzFeed Philippines. Um, we'll have two and two other actors who are my TikTok friends that I think, I feel like we're friends, but like we're not, like internet buds. Um, Marisa Carpio and Nacho Tambud Thing. I feel so inferior with like their um, credits and stuff. <laughs> As actors, they're in New York. So um, Marissa has like a Netflix movie out right now. And um, Nacho was on the show Rise with Ali Cravajo. 
Um, and I'm like, oh my God, y'all are like legit, legitness. Um, I'm on computer now. Okay, good. How often can we vote? Is it like a once a day or only once? I don't know, Jessica. I have no idea with your Gmail, Jessica. Okay. Only once, unfortunately. Well, that stinks. Yes. Only one time, big time. Um, but yes, if you did vote and like, you know, had someone you know vote and then they had someone they know vote, like... I voted with my FB and now with my Gmail. Smart. Jessica, genius. Um, yes. Cool, we'll do it. Thank you, Jenna Lee. Yes. Uh, we've had uh, a lot of other short films, but this is the most recent one we had. The way I made my dog a star TBD, TBT. Yes, this is true. Her dog, Apollo. Um, but yes, we, we make short films. And uh, on the side, we film weddings and stuff as well. Well, my brother does. I go to them. Um, yeah. <laughs> I go to them. Um, but yes, um, that is what I do. Um, and still Florida is, well, not really in quarantine, but I treat it like such because Florida. Florida. Hello, friends. Welcome to the broadcast. I'm going to call y'all out. Hello. You should talk about golf brother okay so i did golf growing up which is why i was very tan um this is my I, i've been very this is i'm really fair right now i had hives this week my whole body my whole face hives awful terrible um and so i haven't seen the sun in a week and a half so i am pale right now oh my goodness i had hives everywhere it was awful apparently i'm allergic to dust mites so and yeah, but yeah, I did play golf. I played golf for 10 years of my life. Um, that is a very Filipino thing, I would say. I feel like, I don't know. I feel like a lot of Filipinos play golf, depending on where you are, but my family, all of them play golf. So all my uncles, and I'm the only girl that plays golf. So. We have seven minutes left. Did you just audition for something? <laughs> I was like, Yes, I did. I, okay. I auditioned for this show called Blind Spotting. Um, and they were looking for a Filipina in her 20s who were like, um, lives in the Bay Area. So I used my cousin's address. Um, I was like, Ate, I need to live in San Jose. And she's like, okay, say no more. And so I auditioned and I said, I'm in San Jose. <laughs> Um, how do you come up with your concepts for your TikTok videos? Um, honestly, like I don't follow the trends on TikTok. I'm so late with trends. So it really is like how I'm feeling. If I'm feeling so down and like have no motivation, I will do a trendy video, like a transition video. But if I feel motivated, I will do a video where I'm talking. So there was actually a lull in my time, like a, like a, like a moment where I was just doing transition videos because I had zero motivation, like none. Yes, go using them resources. So yeah, that's basically like what I, I, I just, what I want to talk about, what I want to see. Um, and it's always, I always t tend to second guess myself. I'm like, oh, dang it. If I make this video, this is what someone might say. This is the possibility that there's going to be this comment. So I've made it a habit to not read the comments so much. At least my my boyfriend tells me not to. So I'm I try not to read the comments so much because some people are mean. People are mean. <laughs> Shout out to you, San Jose girl. Yes, I was born and raised in Burlingame, California. Yeah. By the way, I'm a Bay Area girl, born and raised in the Bay Area. My whole my dad, my whole family, they are like in the Bay Area. And um, yeah, my cousins, all of them, like she's in San Jose. So I was like, can I use your address out there? I'll just live there if I get it. And I'll just say I got it and I live there, you know? Um, and all my family is in California. So watch out because Josh is coming for your rent. He's coming for my brand. Yes. <laughs> Audition too. Yes. Um, what's your absolute favorite ticket you've made so far? That is really true culture. Oh, it's hard. I don't know. I guess just like the first one that I showed you guys with my mom and my dad. It's so simple. The one with mom. Yeah, the one with mom. And I love the one where we transitioned with my mom and my dad. It doesn't really have anything to do with culture, but it's like a time traveling one. And I absolutely love it. But yeah, that one is my other favorite. But yes, um, I audition a lot. And um, hopefully something clicks. Um, I'm a little in too deep now with this career path to just like back out. 
um, there's not really much else that I want to do in life. Um, when I was younger, I wanted to be a politician because politics are imp is important. Um, but maybe when I'm older, I don't know. Filipino AOC. I don't know. Uh, where do you see yourself in the, in the last one? <laughs> in the last five years, um, I see myself exactly where I need to be. Yeah. yeah. And I've, I've, I was actually supposed to compete in Bini Bini Filipinas. Um, I actually was there. I didn't tell Aaron that. But yeah, I was um, in the Philippines uh, last year or two years ago. I don't remember anymore. But I was training with Caganda Hang Flores. It's interesting, you know, being around that environment. Uh, I learned a lot about just like the beauty industry in the Philippines. Uh, I was asked to if I was wanting to get my nose done or my teeth. That was interesting. Um, or my cheekbones. That was also interesting. Um, but I didn't, thankfully, I, I didn't do anything. Um, I didn't really meet the um, residency, but it's cool. I got to meet a lot of people. So I knew a lot of the girls who won pageants that won last year. And they were very kind. Um, but yeah, the, it's a very, very in, interesting industry. OMG, Bamboo is here. Wait, Bamboo? Like like the singer Bamboo? Hmm? Hi, Bamboo. No, the rapper. Oh, hello, Bamboo. Hi, I think so. Rapper sister. Oh, I'm sorry. Hi. Hi. But yes, um, Bini Bini Filipinas is very interesting. Um, a lot of the pageant camps will encourage you to get plastic surgery. And um, yeah, it's sad. It's mucho sad. And it's very, uh, they love it when you're mixed over there. Hi, H9 Bamboo. Girl, read my TikTok, please. I'm a big fan. Jessica, I'm going to bite you. Hold on. Uh, can you make it to a cultural exchange with you and Tyler in relation to Oh my gosh, Jessica. I get so many comments um, about that from people. And it's kind of, I don't know. I'm, I'm very intimidated to talk about my, my um, personal life through TikTok because people are mean. Like I said, comments are mean. People are so mean. If like, I've read, I've seen girls, like if they're dating someone of their race, like, oh my God. Ew, you're dating your cousin and if you date someone especially if you date a white person they're like oh you hate yourself so it's it's like you don't win um and until i get to that point where i'm comfortable with like that happening i will make a video like that abort mission jessica abort mission people are so mean um so yeah i just i avoid it i avoid it catch 22 but so true yes so whether it's me or dad because we're both the georgies yeah brother i have no idea which one's you um so yeah i i just try to um I just make everything very, I, I only share online what I want people to know um, and everything else I keep to myself, but, but yeah. Um, Jen Louis, I, I think I'm doing an interview uh, with Cultivate after this, I think. Did we make it to 30 minutes? Aaron, I think we did. Did we make it? I'm so proud of myself. I was so nervous. I was like, what the heck am I gonna talk about for 30 whole minutes? Um, I probably just rambled for the whole 30 minutes, but it's okay because I did it. <laughs> I did it. 30 minutes felt so long and so short at the same time. Oh my goodness. But yes. How do I go to that? Um, Jenny Lee, any party messages, please vote. I please, especially if you're in like a, I'm just going to say, especially if you're in a red state, please vote, <laughs> please do. And, um, yeah, I don't really have anything to share other than like vote for my brother's short film um, over president. <laughs> yes, please vote for our short film and and vote and vote, please. And yeah, you're gonna get the part for the show. Hopefully, hopefully we'll see. Yeah, and follow my social media if you want to. I don't really know how to promote myself, but yeah, if you want to, that would be awesome. I make stuff, I make videos and let's be friends. 